Good afternoon, G Vegas. It's been a while. Things got so dark for me that I didn't even make a presser last week. Um, I gathered in the press room, which is this vehicle. It's a mobile press room. Um, the cameras began rolling, and I just... I just needed to take a mental health break. So I, I left. I, I jumped out of the mobile press room and, uh, you know, the cameras recorded a blank, a blank background with, with nobody there behind the scene. Six losses in a row. My team, I said it the other day and I'm going to say it again. I'm going to call them out. I've tried playing nice. They have less fight than my high school guys team. Earlier this season, back in October, the Vipers, which is the soccer team that I coach, lost 3-0 against the GMC high school prep boys team. It was a devastating blow. It was devastating for me, especially because I was coaching that GMC team at the time. And it just felt icky. I was, I was sick that the Vipers had lost that game and I, that I had done such an excellent job coaching that I had outsmarted my own team. Not saying that the GMC team won because of the coaching or that the Vipers lost because of coaching. However, the data speaks for itself, so you tell me. Five days after that game, six days after that game, the Vipers lost 6-1 at Bob Jones Academy on their senior night. A month prior to that, we had played against Bob Jones Academy and tied 1-1. Again, at this loss, I was not present. I was working on Big Bad Brad's yard up in Wilmington, North Carolina. Not far from where Corbin just uh, had his big breakfast date with Mary, or South Dakota girl, as she is more affectionately called. Again, not saying coaching had anything to do with it, but I missed two games this year. They were both losses. Following the Bob Jones loss, though, that next Tuesday at practice, gathered the boys around and had a what we called a family meeting. Everyone sat in a circle, almost like a fire pit. I wanted to emulate a fire pit, actually. Really could have gone for a brat that day, too, but just didn't have any. Anyways, we sat in a circle and we went over team core values and I asked the team to rate on a scale of zero through 10, how well we had adhered to those core values that we set as a team on the first day of practice earlier in the year. The highest that we gave ourselves, I believe was a six. The lowest was, I believe a two. We talked for probably 45 minutes, maybe an hour of that practice about what we want to see moving forward, how we want to change, how we need to change to get the season back on track. At that point in the year, we had pretty much blown the league. I mean, our league is fairly competitive, almost like the old college football model. And the thoughts of winning the postseason tournament were non-existent. Fast forward to today, where our next game after that, after that family meeting, uh, was that Friday against Hampton Park Christian School, home of the Panthers, alma mater of John Alexander Kurth the fourth, Tristan T.J. Paws, Master Mute Pawson, as well as Jonathan Luke Vulcan Brooks. We were down 1-0 at half. Had a pretty stern halftime halftime uh, talk with the guys and made some adjustments. We came back into the game, 
we scored two minutes into the second half, I believe. Um, Hampton Park scored a goal with a minute left. They had a well, breakaway. Our two center backs hit each other. Ball goes through their best player scores 2-1. We get a, a game-tying goal in the last 10 seconds of the game via penalty kick. Well-earned penalty kick. John Cruz will tell you otherwise. It was well-earned. Uh, it was a, a foolish foul on their defense. That game turned around our season. We lost two straight. The Vipers, in my time as a coach, we've the worst defeat that we've ever had was, at that time, 4-1. So to lose 6-1 to Bob Jones. And that 4-1 loss, we played against a much better team. A much better team. That Bob Jones team is not much better than us. They're better, not much better. Not 6-1 better. So we lost back-to-back games for the first time since I, I I don't think I don't think I'll have to consult the stat sheets, but I don't think that's happened in my time as head coach that we've lost back-to-back games. Um, again, much less six-one. Then the Hampton Park game, we've already lost back-to-back games. We're down one at half, and uh, it looked like we were heading down, you know, on the road to another defeat. The boys turned it around then, and then we rattled off win after win after win. We had to win out to have a shot at the league. We put ourselves in a position to have a shot in the final match day, and we took it. We took it. We we beat a um, we beat the Brazier Charter School prep team in the last game of the regular season, two one, which is a pretty decent team. Uh, We played them in the tournament last year, tied them zero zero in the group stage, but we played a great game, secured the win and went on to the tournament and guys i'm just i cannot tell you how proud i am of my guys the first game of the tournament we played a team that we had tied 1-1 back in september and we blitzed them went out to a 4-0 lead four, led 4-0 at half ended up beating them 4-1 they got a consolation goal didn't mean anything we played so well we fought we won every 50 50 they were arguing with each other on the field after the third goal I mean, we just blitzed them. It was awesome. And then we played a travel team from Georgia that night, beat them 2-0, and had already qualified for the championship game um, Saturday night. So our, our Sunday morning game against the BJU MLS U.S. soccer bitch uh, really was a meaningless game. We ended up losing 2-0, played a lot of the backups, um, gave them good playing times. So they didn't play a whole lot the rest of the tournament. And then Sunday night, championship game against uh, Cesar Markowitz. They beat us last year twice, 2-1 both times. Um, Well, actually, they beat my younger team, the Diamondbacks. They beat them twice, 2-1 last year. And then this year we played Markowitz, and they were up 2-0 in the first 10 minutes. We came back, took a 4-2 lead, and they scored another late one. Uh, But we were able to get secure a 4-3 win. Um, against them and that was a tremendous game that was that was late September that that happened so super proud of those guys um, for sure so all that being said the season turned around but the guys wanted it they wanted it they earned it they corrected it was it was among my most proud coaching achievements that I've ever had And I will look back on this weekend for a very long time and always be very proud. My fantasy football team has not showed the same tenacity and ferocity, and I'm going to need to start seeing it, or else wholesale changes are going to be made. We've already changed the team name, and I stand by that, um, but I'm not opposed to making further changes and even partnering with our um, division rival, the North Korean Fighting Kims, to send a message to my team if I need to. If my fantasy football team is able to show even a quarter of the of the fighting spirit, excuse me, of the fighting spirit that my guy's soccer team has showed this season, then we'll be able to we'll be able to rescue what has been a genuinely awful year. If not, we're heading straight towards having to seeing Steve Ager around downtown Greenville. We'll see what happens. Um, but guys, rest assured. Rest assured. Uh, I'm very concerned about my team and my season. Uh, this is this has not been an excellent coaching uh, job as far as my fantasy football team goes, unlike the, the soccer season has been. 
Anyways, I will let y'all go. This is a long presser. Um, thanks for listening, and I will see you all soon.